Hey Chiefs! Welcome back to the Hawaii Dead Survival Beginner's Book. Today, we're taking a closer look at one of the most crucial events in the game, Fortress Battle. Fortress is a military building that comes by default on the server map. Every alliance tries to etch their glory in the fortress. This video will provide an overview of the fundamental rules, strategies for fortress battles, and the rewards involved. Let's jump right in! Fortress event comes every week, and every alliance on the servers can participate in the battle. There are 16 buildings on the map, 12 fortresses, and for strongholds. Strongholds and fortresses are basically the same. They don't have any major differences. Fortress buildings are occupied by mercenaries. There are two stages in this event, registration and battle. The battle occurs every Friday, and you can register one day in advance if you are R5 or R4. You can register one fortress and one stronghold each week. If you win the registered fortress and stronghold, they will be automatically registered for the following week. As an example, if you win one fortress and one stronghold in the first week. You can fight for two fortresses and two strongholds in the next week. You can fight for a maximum of eight fortresses and for strongholds in a season. Each season contains eight weeks. Remember, strongholds is not available in the first season. Fortress battle lasts for two hours, but if any alliance occupies it for a straight 30 minutes, that alliance will be declared the winner. If an alliance controls the fortress for 29 minutes, and another alliance defeats them. The cooldown will reset for another 30 minutes. If no alliance can maintain control for 30 minutes, the alliance that is in control at the end of the two-hour period will be the winner. Fortress battles mainly occur between the top 10 alliances of every server. Any alliance can participate, but lower level or weaker alliances have almost no chance of achieving victory. If you are a normal player, try to join a larger alliance. However, if you are R5 or R4, you will have a lot of responsibilities. Let's discuss this from the R5 perspective. First, you need to ensure who will stay online during the fortress event. Next, you should select two strong players to serve as the rally captain and garrison captain as bonus members. The same person can take on both roles, but this will put a significant burden on one player and may lead to problems. Moreover, if one player's infirmary becomes full, they will start losing troops. Both the rally captain and the garrison captain should be strong players. If you don't have a whale, try to select someone with good gear and heroes. Fortress cannot be conquered solo, so you need to rally. According to the basic rally rules, there are four members who will provide rally joiner skills. The game will automatically select the highest level skills among the members who join first. Hero selection is important. The rally and garrison captains should use their best three heroes. Rally joiners have several options. Their Q captain should be either Jesse, Jasser, or Seo Yoon. These three are classic heroes. At advanced levels, you can use Reina, Wayne, Gwen, Nora, or Renee. Classic garrison joiner heroes are Patrick, Sergey, Ling Shuang, and Bali Spoken. At advanced levels, you can use Gato, Zinman, Armos, Wu Ming, or Gordon. Basically, in every generation, you have to select heroes who have the first expedition skills related to attack for the rally and select skills related to defense for the garrison. Troop formation depends on players' stats, so there is no ultimate formation. However, there are some formations that work for many people. Rally formations 40, 20, 40, 50, 20, 30, and 45, 20, 35. Garrison formations 60, 20, 20, 70, 30, 0, and 50, 40, 10. It is recommended to practice on your own to find out which works best in your alliance. Next, we talk about battle strategies. Teleport with your team near the fortress at least five minutes before. And bonus captain members should stay as close to the fortress as possible. Your troops will be lost only if the infirmary is full, so you need to keep healing continuously. There are two types of preparation for rallies, one minute and five minutes. It is always recommended to use one minute preparation. Bonus members should use city bonuses using gems for better attack and defense. Keep in mind that rally joiners cannot use any bone except uses pet skill tumbling power. 
power and city bonus deployment capacity. If any player is from small alliances, he can go solo and steal the participation rewards. I will mention it in the rewards part, so be careful of them. As soon as the fortress opens, the rally captain will call for a one-minute rally, and players will join with Jesse or another attacking hero. Everyone will maintain the formation decided by the captain. At the same time, as soon as the fortress opens, the garrison captain will rush to the fortress with an accelerator, and some players will follow behind him with Patrick or another defensive hero as their Q captain. It should be pre-decided who will go with which bonus member and which joiner hero. However, it is recommended that the rally captain should wait 15 seconds before calling the rally. At this moment, our first team is already inside the fortress with the garrison captain and Patrick-like heroes as joiners, while the second team is in rally initiation mode for one minute. There is a high chance that other rallies from different alliances can defeat us during this one minute time period. If our defensive team gets defeated, don't worry. Our second team will hit the fortress within the next 15 seconds and regain control. If no alliance defeats us during that one minute, our second rally will simply refill the troops' vacancies. After you get control, the Jesse user will slowly leave and the defensive joiners will fill their places. If this method fails, there is one more method. The double rally strategy. Suppose the opponent alliance is holding the fortress. Your top two players will start to rallies at the same time. For better communication, it is advised to use Discord. Members should join the rally with attaching type heroes. If one rally is started a few seconds before the other, the first rally should have a Jesse joiner and the second rally should have a Patrick joiner. If your alliance has many players online, you can try more rallies at the same time. There is no way the opponent can stop all rallies. When your alliance is holding the fortress, your only duties are to keep sending garrisons and continuously heal your troops. If you can continue this for a straight 30 minutes, victory is yours. This is 200 IQ gameplay. You can extend the battle for two hours, and in the last two minutes, you can start multiple rallies. If the opponent cannot stop the rallies, you will gain control of the fortress. There is no way for the opponent to start another rally at the last minute. Your team will be the winner. Now, I am going to show you some 200 IQ gameplay. We called a rally at the last minute, and our rally is going just before the fortress battle ends. Let's see what happens here. We gained control of the fortress with only a few seconds remaining before the battle ended. Now let's talk about rewards. The participation rewards is for those who can defeat the guarding mercenaries. If anyone can defeat the mercenaries alone, he can receive the reward by himself. It is advised to call a rally so that everyone in the rally can get the reward. Now, let's see how someone could steal rewards from you. A normal rally was heading to the fortress when suddenly, one player teleported there and attacked the fortress. If he had been able to attack successfully, he could have stolen the participation reward. Your alliance should always be cautious of this type of player. If you try to steal rewards from a large alliance like this, be careful. They may find you later and retaliate. If you are part of a big alliance, do not take the participation rewards alone. Join a rally or call one and share the rewards equally among your members. Next, alliance rewards. After your alliance members defeat the mercenaries, the entire alliance will receive this reward. Last but not least, allocatable rewards. R5 and R4 can distribute this reward after your alliance achieves the first occupation of the fortress. Everyone in the alliance receives this chest when your alliance occupies a fortress until the end. This is the main reward for the fortress. Only R5 and R4 can distribute it. This is the season rewards for the fortress event. Your alliance will earn 1 point for points for controlling a fortress and a point for points for controlling a stronghold. If there are many fortress battles happening at the same time, divide your players equally among them. If your alliance does not have enough online members, try to attack the fortresses one by one. This is how you can fight for and win the fortress. Do you have any exclusive strategies? Share them in the comments and join our official Discord for more. Stay tuned for the next video. Whiteout Survival. Play free now.